Robinson, Matt Hunkler from Blue Lock, and today we're talking about EC2 versus vCloud. So this Amazon EC2, which is a Zen-based uh, self-service cloud, and vCloud, which is both self-service self with vCloud Express, uh, and then also an internal cloud as well, right? Mm -hmm. So, and that's a VMware-based cloud. But uh, what I'd like to do is, you know, just if you could talk a little bit from a technical detail, and I'll kind of take some notes as you talk, okay. and um, then we'll discuss some of the differences. Right, so the first thing we want to talk about is when we're talking about vCloud today, we're talking uh, more about vCloud in general, not just vCloud Express, but you know, both your internal, your public clouds, you know, that all combined and, and what that gets you versus running your instances or virtual machines in EC2. Uh, you know, the first thing I got to call out right away, Matt, is uh, you know, with vCloud or vCloud Express, I don't need any API knowledge. Okay. So that's, I mean, that's the first thing that stands out to me. Sure. Um, you know, when you log into, for instance, vCloud Express, you've got a, a web-based dashboard. I can click and spin up a virtual machine from one of the templates in the library, and I'm good to go. There were no API calls I had to make. There were no public-private keys I had to enter. It was all just ready for me to click the go button. Okay, cool. And then, and then get, kind of going back, uh, one of the things I kind of breezed over in the introduction is the fact that this, this Zen is fully self-service, right? X. No I, problem. I spell good. We won't tell anybody. <laughs> All right, awesome. <laughs> um, so some, some API knowledge required. This is a, a self-service cloud. This is self-service um, public cloud and internal cloud, right? Right, yeah, so Express is the, again, we've explained this before, but Express is the uh, self-service, public cloud, uh, rapid deployment, easy to use. Um, you know, vCloud Express and EC2 are, are kind of on the same plane. Um, when we talk about vCloud as a whole, we're talking about integrating, you know, your internal processes, you know, both, you know, uh, private and public clouds. Okay. Um, so the next thing, while we're on the subject of the no API, mm -hmm. so the API in vCloud is going to go across, you know, both your internal and external cloud. So you're not going to have to learn a different uh, API structure for your internal cloud and your external cloud. It's all going to be one API. So we're talking code portability here. Right. Um, with the Zen Cloud, that EC2 API is proprietary to Amazon EC2, so that's not going to go anywhere. Okay. Uh, in fact, I think VMware is actually um, submitting their API to a board to make it an open standard. Oh, that's great. So you know they did that with uh, they're doing that with the OVF file, so the actual virtual machines. Okay. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of different companies are using that OVF standard to to make virtual machines portable between different uh, vendors. That's awesome. So, while we're talking about the OVFs, that's another thing is I can spin up a virtual machine on my desktop and upload it to my vCloud Express or my vCloud. I don't I don't need to go through you know weird. So so Zen doesn't actually have virtual machines. They have instances and they have these Amazon machine instances and you've got to do some weird API calls it just doesn't feel natural to me okay um, you know coming from a VMware environment it doesn't feel natural at all to to spin up virtual machines in a Zen environment okay or so create new templates so, so, so this idea of kind of in, in Express you can power down your machine but that machine is still there that that operating system and that Configuration is still there, right? That's a, so that's persistence. That's another topic. Okay. okay. What, I'm, what I'm talking about is I can download VMware Player Three, which is free. Okay. And build it on your desktop. I can build it on my desktop. I configure it the way I want it, and then I can upload it to my internal cloud, my public cloud, whatever VMware vCloud cloud uh, I want to. Whereas with Zen, my am those Amazon AMIs, those are those are kind of proprietary. They're kind of stuck there. You, you have can't. to build that on the on the web. Yep. Okay. Cool.
And so let's talk about persistence then. Right. So that's that's another thing about uh, you know the virtual machine versus the the EC2 uh, AMI is that you know by default you know your your instances in EC2 are not persistent. So when they get powered down, they're gone. You okay. have to spin them back up and redo your configuration. And there are ways around that, but it just makes sense to me that that kind of stuff, you know. Is a no. Why wouldn't somebody want to do that by right. default? So, you know, by with a with a VMware virtual machine, you know that persistence is there by default. Okay. It's it's a virtual server. I mean, it's just like running a, a physical server in in a virtual world. So. Right. You know. So coming from persistent the operating system is there. All my configuration is there. I can power it down. I can power it up with no consequence whatsoever. So it's a little more intuitive maybe for someone that's coming from the physical world uh, and going into a cloud environment. You know, if they're using vCloud Express, it's a little more intuitive because you power down the machine, that data, that, that configuration is all still there and you can just fire it right back up. Mm -hmm. Whereas if with, with EC2 to power it down, you really just have to blow that instance away. It's, right. It's not persistent. Okay. Well, one of the other things I kind of wanted to touch on because I've had some discussions about this uh, in the past there's this idea of like a content delivery network. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things I've, I've heard, you know, about Zen and, and the reason people like to use Zen is this content delivery network. You can actually choose where your physical resources reside. Because Amazon is so huge and they have so many data centers uh, across the country, you can actually choose geographically where, where those are. Uh, I know that with vCloud Express, it's still in beta. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, there aren't necessarily uh, data centers all over the place, you know, with one provider. Right. But uh, you know, certainly you could choose which provider you would like to use, uh, you know, based on their geography right, of their right. of their data center. So you can kind of work around it that way. And I'm sure that they're working to de develop content delivery networks. But it is kind of uh, of a newer idea, right? Yeah, that option is is certainly a a plus in the EC2 side. But again, there are multiple uh, vCloud Express or vCloud providers, you know, coming on board. Um, that you'll you'll have that option, so I can see like a, a compliance need, even not just a a uh, you know low latency need, but a compliance need that you know my data needs to reside in a certain state or a certain county or whatever. <laughs> right. Okay, that makes sense. So um, I would say the last thing I want to touch on is you know VMware has this uh, concept of a V app, so I can actually group my servers together. And it, uh, administer them as a as a group rather than a single machine, and you know that's that's definitely something yeah. something else that uh, really helps out. So so what is the main benefit of a V app? Is what? So I have a multi-tiered application. Okay. So I have a web server, an app server, and a database server. All three of these virtual machines work together to do something. Right. So when I want to make changes to it, like uh, power up, power down, any of those administrative stuff, uh, or let's say I want to import. So I want to have a scalable application that runs on multiple servers. Okay. Um, you know, there's no way to do that on on the Zen, um, you know, base platform. Okay. So with the V app, I can I can download this. Uh, I'm sorry with vCloud, I can download this vApp, which is multiple servers that all you know provide this application, and then I can administer them as a group rather than just a single server. Oh, that's cool. All right, cool. Well, I, I think we touched on some pretty key uh, differences. I'm excited about JClouds too. JClouds is actually works in both clouds. Yeah. So both EC2 and so maybe everybody should just switch to JClouds, <laughs> and then you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, you're super uh, agnostic there, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Well, uh, this is a, a great overview. Thanks, thanks for kind of walking us through that. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention is that today we started a contest with uh, vCloud Express, the, the Blue Lock vCloud Express. You can go to our website and sign up. Uh, we, we're calling it the Cloud Monkey Contest. For those that like to use the, the public uh, vCloud Express uh, infrastructure, you can go sign up and uh, develop the coolest, most innovative app is going to get a free iPad. And actually the first 10 to sign up are going to get some, some free gear.